Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at basically what is aggro or fast sword, however you want to name it. Aggro sword is probably the more traditional name for them. It hasn't changed too much to be honest as far as aggro sword goes in over the last six-ish months. We haven't seen a massive shift in the cards that it's got or used since of course both expansions and Righteous Dragon is really the only one that's seen more play as Handspur is actually an amazing card for dealing damage. As you'll see in this video, it does a wonderful job picking up lethals where you wouldn't really expect it. Uh, of course, Phoenix Rider and Dragoon are your big lethal conditions. They do an amazing job of winning games. Poseidon can be used both early game and late game, which makes it a star card, especially when going into the late game against a more controller oriented deck, you could potentially just go Poseidon into Phoenix in over a two turn period and do an amazing job, so we're going to get right into it and check it out. So the first match for this video is against Sword, no surprise, very popular and unlimited. Spartacus Sword and Aggro Sword, very very popular decks. I have got a Spartacus Sword deck video planned, although I don't know if I'm really too happy with the deck, but you'll see that in a few days. Ivory Dragon, Disciple of Disdain, Phoenix Rider, Anna. Anna. Ina. I don't know, we'll go Anna, because it's convenient. So I started off playing the 1-2 because I wanted to have something to trigger either Rend or to stain on. I ended up getting Servant anyway, but this is a free 1 damage at this point, and you really want to be playing those early game anyway. You're serving Spineblade, unfortunate. I would have loved to have comboed it with the Disdain, but I couldn't miss the chance to put more cards onto the board. Whereas here, I did decide to forego that because we ended up with the Dragonoot. Which was a wonderful way to round out this board. Fortunately, Dragon doesn't need a lot of high tack followers in the early game. Local stuff is okay, they usually avoid getting targeted too much and allow you to set up quite nicely in the long run. And this is actually a good chance to play Dragon Sword, even if it is sacrificial. If we can get the Evo to go off, we can set up for Dragoon. If the Evo doesn't go off, we're not really any worse for wear. Since we can actually go for some decent setup with these cards. So Mentor's teaching, basically just drawing cards now. No surprise, looks like they're playing a Spartacus variant. Disdain, such a good card for this deck. Drawing all your low cost stuff always helps. Even these Phoenixes are actually okay. Now Pure Hearted Singer. So the only thing you want to do against Spartacus Sword is going hard. The harder you go in in the early game, the better off you will be. Because situations like Maisie here are terrible to deal with, but anything else is actually quite manageable. So, Ryder is going to give us a good chance. With an Evo point, we can actually bring them down to lethal range next turn for Dragon Forte, which is perfect. And since Spinex Sword doesn't tend to run any healing that I can think of, it's actually very easy to counter. And Predicting they'll go for Spartax on 6 is very common, especially if they think they can clear the board out, so they're probably not going for any kind of ward. Not that I can think of any that they run, other than possibly Bell Ringers. I have seen Spartax Swords run those in the past. I in particular even run them in some Spartax Sword decks, because they are really good bait. But Dragoon is perfect, of course, the concede. No surprise when Dragoon hits the board, knowing you're going to die to 7 damage. Worked out wonderfully. Next up we get to play up against something a little more troublesome, a mid shadow deck. Another deck that is reasonably common in the unlimited, unlimited ladder. If you see shadow, typically it's going to be a mid shadow. I don't see many other shadow decks in at least the last week or so in unlimited. Which is where I have been doing most of my challenges lately as I have felt like that's the best place to do it. Also those sleeves are absolutely gorgeous. I did not notice them when I was playing against them and now that I do I kind of wish I had them. I don't think I do have them though. I'm pretty sure they weren't a reward from a uh, from Grand Prix, were they? Hmm, they might have been. I'll definitely have to see if I have those after this. So this is still a very solid start. I don't even really need to worry about the 1-2 there. There's no point removing it with Rend. Since they're probably going to do that for me. Which is super predictable, Demon Eater. It did hit the Goblin, which was actually perfect. If I wanted to hit any low-cost card, it was definitely Goblin. And Righteous Dragon is going to do a good job. I probably could have went on the one of the 1-3s. I just decided to just leave them as 1-3s. They're going to probably target the 2-2 two -two anyway, so... I mean, why weaken potentially decent followers? 
And they're going for again the lurching corpse. No big surprise there. It actually should be reasonably easy to take these out. White Frost and Dragon Sword will do a really good job of cleaning these up. We're also going to be at 7 play points next turn, which makes Forte or Handsburg completely usable without any issues. Although Shadow does have some decent ways to deal with things. Cerberus Hound being a great example of that. Right now I'm thinking Handspur and White Frost are the best plays. White Frost to kill the Cerberus, Handspur to do some damage. Or we just throw the Dragoon, that's actually a really good way to do things as well I guess. 7 damage to face, that's a total for 9, takes out half their health before they can put any wards up on potentially turn 6. And you can't easily trade with the 7-3. So they definitely got to take advantage of whatever they can right now. So I guess we made a pretty okay call. Still Cloud Minotaur though does kind of ruin any big plays we wanted to do. At least Poseidon might buy us some time. Now a Gremory play. This is uh, probably the worst possible thing to happen to our board. I mean, it's not the worst thing, worst thing, it's just really, really bad to have to deal with this. Like, we're going to be able to clear this out, we're going to be able to pretty much fluff our board up a little bit. I would have preferred to have used that for extra draw power, but I can't really risk sacrificing the chance to potentially board myself up with Dethan followers ready for Rider, so... Skull Beast and Minotaur. Minotaur is the bane of your existence when you're playing these type of decks. It's very hard to get around and it pretty much always has to be dealt with immediately. Luckily we can at least go for Handsburg for some draw power and another Rider. Rider is going to clear out the Minotaur and we're going to be able to go for 3 damage to face. At this point that's all we can do. Create face damage so that they potentially won't kill us. Death's Breath, that was a really good play. If they have Demon Lord, they effectively win the game. That's the only problem right now. Demon Lord will straight up just end the game next turn, no matter what I do. Because they can easily sacrifice their own followers. So my best bet was just to buy time and draw cards. And I'm glad I did, because Righteous Dragoon is actually lethal next turn if they don't have Demon Lord. And since they start attacking into followers, it's very safe to assume they don't have it. Which means Dragoon is going to be 100% lethal. We also end up top decking Omen, which again would have been lethal since we could have just played that and attacked with it into a follower to deal 3 damage. But since I stuck with the original plan, I thought why not continue on with it and finish the game that way. So I personally have found this deck very consistent. It is reasonably cheap. Reasonably. It is 9 legendaries, which doesn't make it super cheap, and it has got a few golds. I mean. 12 golds definitely isn't anything to sneeze at. Well, not quite 12 golds, sorry, 11 golds I think if we work that out right. Either way, 9 golds, no, sorry, 9 legendaries, 11 golds, and the rest are bronze and silver. But most of these legendaries people have, unless you are an absolutely brand new player, most people who have played more than a year would probably have Dark Dragoon Forte. If you don't have Dark Dragoon Forte, you can easily swap her out for something like Iron Strahaka, although they are a lot slower. Probably not actually the best thing to swap in. I'd probably swap in... Uh, I'm trying to remember its name... The 5 drop storm. I think it's 5 drop. 5 drop storm that can be invocated. Off the top of my head I can't think of it. Someone will probably leave it in the comments, but... Really good card if you wanted to swap that out. That is a relatively new card as far as it goes. Otherwise everything else is reasonably new or gold class which could be created or bronze and silver which also could very easily be created. So if you guys did enjoy this video be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. You'll find the deck list in the description below. Until next time, see ya.